Thanks for joining us for today's Flip Nerd VIP show. Today I'm joined by guest Duncan Weirman, who is a marketing strategist, teaches people how to do all sorts of real estate investing from lead generation for single family homes and even a lot of stuff with multifamily homes. Uh, before we get started with our interview today, which you don't want to miss, let's recognize our sponsors. RealtyMogul.com is an online marketplace for real estate investing, connecting borrowers and capital from accredited and institutional investors. Get a rehab loan fast and close in as little as 10 days. Rates start as low as 9%. We'd also like to thank National Real Estate Insurance Group, the nation's leading provider of insurance to the residential real estate investor market. From individual properties to large-scale investors, National Real Estate Insurance Group is ready to serve you. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of Flipner.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Duncan, so thanks for joining us today. Hey, my pleasure. I'm, I'm always willing to talk about stuff I do. I'm, I'm really passionate about what I do, and I believe there's so much abundance out there, and anybody follow one or two of the techniques that we'll talk about, you know, they're going to get more leads just for taking time this half hour to listen. So thank you for having me. Great, great. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? If you would, I'd like to know a little bit more about you as a person. How did you get started in uh, real estate investing? Funny story. Funny they, story. they always are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was actually a CEO of a software company, global company, and I'd lived overseas for 23 years. And I had mm. come back to the United States at the, at, if you remember, the last tech crunch yep. crash. That's where I started. I had to come back to the United States with my tail between my legs and start all over again. I didn't really have many prospects out there. Um, and it just so happened I was watching late night TV and this infomercial came on about this guy talking about uh, how much money he made in real estate. He showed all these people thinking they made money, they made money. And I was saying, I don't look I'm like, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. So I whipped out my credit card and I bought that late night infomercial, of course. And that was my start. Can you say who it was? It was Carlton Sheep. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I did everything wrong. My first six months were a disaster. Yeah. I almost quit. I really did. But for me, you know, I was, you know, failure was not an option. I knew if I focused, I consistently did action. And, I, you know, I figured it out. And uh, just so happened, I did. I cracked it. I'm like, you know what? I can do this. And I know I can do it better. And that's how I started on my path of real estate investing and trying to tweak the, tweak the system yeah. to get more beat. Yeah, yeah. So do you remember the first house you bought? I do, and I was scared stiff. Uh, it was a uh, three-bedroom, one-bath condo in the University area of Charlotte, North Carolina. For the, for the time. I was trying to focus on uh, lease option deals, and the guy says, well, why don't we, can't you just take it over subject to? I'm like, subject to? What is that? You know, he, he knew more than I. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to sell me the house. And he told me, I said, oh, I, I got to hurry up and go out and find some paperwork to do this. So I got a subject to, no money down. Um, but I had to spend $300 on fixing the air conditioner. Hmm. And that was all my money I had saved. <laughs> wow. So if I didn't sell that house, like, by in within that month, I'm going to be in trouble because I had no money to pay for the mortgage payment. And I never wanted to have that stress again. So I had to figure out ways to sell a house fast. Yeah, I remember that. I think that that feeling, I, you know, I can relate to a lot of people, you know, that fear, that anxiety. So I, I had ways I wanted to fix that. So it was a lot less stressful. Yeah, yeah. And so what, and that was like, what, 2000? 2003. I started Three, investing okay. in June 2003. And I probably did not get my first deal in June, uh, August of 2003. So yeah. it's three months of striking out. Yeah, yeah. Well, why do you think, uh, before we talk a little bit more about the programs and some of the things you do, why do you think so many real estate investors never really get out of the gate? Four reasons. Fear, okay, because they're afraid to make an offer. Uh, just peril, you know, analysis paralysis fear. Uh, time, they have every good intention to do something, but, you know, life gets in the way. Yeah. Uh, three, money. They all say, I don't have money or that. Well, they got to show them how to get private money or how to buy houses without any money. And then the fourth one is lack of support of a plan. 
And I really feel sorry for a lot of people. And I was, I was sucked into this too. Mm -hmm. because when I bought my second real estate course, I spent $800, which is a lot of money for a short sale course. And they promised me at the seminar it would answer all my questions. I'd have a system and I would never have to worry again and have these leads come in. Three weeks into it, I was like, wait a second, he doesn't cover this, he doesn't cover this. Yeah. So I, I called up the office and said, hey, I have some questions, this isn't covered. He would never call me back. Well, I shouldn't say that. Four weeks later, his sales team called me back and they tried to sell me a riverboat cruise for a week for $15,000 where all of my problems would be solved. I'm like, yeah. I don't have $15,000. All I want is a question answer. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know? I was like, you gotta be kidding me. 800 bucks, you don't even answer a question? Right. So that really hurt. That's probably why I'm so adamant about calling people out nowadays and judging the quality of course because I've been there. Right. And why I go over and above, I feel I do it my support and say, guys, when you buy, you buy a course from me, you're getting my personal email, you get my personal phone number, I'll even log into your computer and do it for you once to make sure you're getting it. Hmm. So yeah, those four reasons people are, are not succeeding. I try to uh, uh, you know, put together a system that gives people more time, teach them how to get more money, the support, and fund the lead to get more money. Yeah, I think a lot of those programs by design always leave you wanting just a little more so you can buy the next level up. I don't know about a riverboat cruise, but uh, <laughs> but you can buy the platinum level. Oh, you didn't upgrade to the platinum level the first time? Well, now you can do it. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I just, I understand it's a business and it's to make money, but I honestly like to help people succeed. And um, that's why we have a partnership program. If, hey, if you don't have the money, well, let's bring us into the deal. We split it, split it 50 with me. You know, let's both make money on it. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I like, you believe in karma, I believe in karma, pay it for, you know, make people successful, and you're going to be more successful. Yeah, yeah. Um, talk, talk a little bit about just kind of the, I mean, you were, a, I guess, a bit of a trailblazer with generating leads online before it was cool. Obviously, it's very cool now, so it's more competitive than ever, but um, why don't you talk a little bit about, um, you know, obviously, this is one of the things that I've thought for a long time is, and it's still the case, uh, real estate investors and the kind of real estate investor community and technology have not really collided yet, like most other industries. It's a laggard. They have not. And I think it has to do with a lot of the demographic of the type of person who is a real estate investor. I find the average real estate investor is probably starting out when they're 40 years old and they're a little bit behind the technology curve anyway. Yeah. I mean, they might know, you know how to turn off a computer and email and a Word document, that's about it. Um, so there, there is a generation gap uh, on that part. But when I first began, the internet was new. You know, I, man, one page static website was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. So I remember trying to build my first website. I'm like, oh my gosh, what a nightmare this is. You know, yeah. I, even though I was a CEO of a software company, I was not a programmer here. I was trying to do it myself, right. save money. Uh, but when you apply that website to building, getting traffic, you know, everybody thinks, oh, I have a website, you know, like that build a thing that people will come. No, it doesn't work that way. No. You have to know how to market, drive traffic to your site. Um, but it started going, you know, and it's, you got to think of how to drive traffic to a website. Why should they come to you? And that involves a thought process of, you got to show your authority. You got to show your your thought leadership, your vision, and actually stand out. Why people should do business with you rather than the next guy? And that's really what I'm about: is building your personal brand online, using creative techniques to get more people to come to your website and converting them to prospects to customers. Yep, yep. And so you started off, and I, I assume for quite some time you primarily were focused on single family houses. I was, um, and I believe focus is key. Um, one of the reasons I see more people fail in real estate is that they go for every new shiny object course that comes out there. Yeah. And the only thing that made me really, really successful in the beginning was I picked one strategy, and I took massive action, and I did it consistently every single day as my life depended on it. Right. And Sure enough, little bit by little bit pays off. Uh, and most people, they might take massive action one day, but they don't follow up or they don't take to a consistent. So they fail. 
fail. But I chose lease option as my first investment strategy because it was easy. It made perfect sense to me, even though I got one of my houses subject to, you know, it was easy, uh, made sense. I was passionate about it. I felt I was helping people. And I ended up after that first six months of disaster in my next year, I did 77 deals. Hmm. And, you know, 10 years ago, you know, if I was making three to $5,000 in average profit, that's still nice money. Yeah. And that was enough for me. I don't ever have to look back. I've never worked for anybody else again. And still get the strength, the strength. Yeah. And so to clarify, you, you were, you were buying houses and then leasing them out with, with, uh, the tenant had the option to buy the house that you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Are and, you still, are you still doing that today? I'll do it occasionally, yeah. but uh, because I moved into the multifamily field, that's more exciting to me. I yeah. kind of like get bored after a while. I'm like, okay, okay. You know, yeah. so multifamily provides me more of a challenge. Uh, but I teach, I teach uh, lease option investing where one of my fast cash strategies, I, I show people, look, you want to deal in 30 days, this is how we're going to do it. You have software that's going to generate the lease for you. At least 100, 100 leads every single day. We're going to email them, we're going to call them, and we're going to text them. And I guarantee you, if you work the numbers, you know, everything is numbers, um, you're going to get a deal. Hmm. I remember making cold calls to people. I make a hundred cold calls a week. But I knew, and I hear, no, 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 but I knew I could get one deal. Yeah. So if I can get people, their phone ringing where the people are calling them, and they do the talking, they're going to get a deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and of course, uh, and you, you'll know more about this than me, but with lease options, you know, there's so much more regulation and stuff now that makes that difficult. In fact, that some states, it's just uh, not, there's, not that there's not creative ways to accomplish the same thing, sure. but, you know, even yeah, in Texas, Texas yeah. Difficult. Maryland is difficult. North Carolina now is difficult. So, yeah, I had to adjust my strategy. Yeah. So I actually went into rehabbing after that, and, um, you know, I'm not the handyman type of guy. You know, how I change the light bulb is like, I write a check. Right. Uh, I'm writing lots of checks, but I ended up doing 45 rehab over the next 18 months. But then came the problem is, man, I'm working 60 hours a week chasing five different con you know, contractors around. I'm like, this is not a lifestyle. This is just another job. Yeah. So what I did then is, I'm like, well, I had I knew how to get wholesale deals to just fix them up. Now I'm like, I'm just going to sign these suckers. That was easy. Yeah. Um, but the only problem is when you start assigning so many deals, you have a tax liability. So I'm like, uh oh, how do I, how do I protect myself against the tax man? And yeah. uh, that means, well, then I have to get into buy and hold or multifamily investing. Yeah. And that's how that trail. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know every successful entrepreneur has a story, but it, every single one of them includes the ability to kind of adapt to the market and the economy and regulations and legislation and stuff like that. It just forces you to, I mean, for folks that are focused on one thing, um, you, you can't be a one trick pony, you know? Right. Yeah. I think, you know, when you're beginning focus, find, everybody should join their local real estate investor association to get the lay of the land. Okay. Without a doubt, surround yourself with successful people. Uh, Rhea knows the legislation. Well, your success story. It's inspiring. Good education basically almost free education yeah. and then take a strategy and stick to it to learn it and then expand your, your business model. Right. So I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So how has, um, a little bit about the technology that, that you, I know you sell, you kind of educate people on and things like that. Um, that, that obviously has to constantly evolve as well because the internet's obviously changing, you know, some days you wake up and things have changed dramatically. So, um, it has. Yeah, and I got to tell you, you're still of, teaching a power course on MySpace, right? Uh, you know, you know, there's <laughs> opportunity on MySpace. I will tell you, there's still yeah. opportunity there, but you use it to build bird dogs more than anything. Okay. Else. Um, <laughs> you know, um, technology does change every day. Sites change every day. Um, though we want to piggyback on the main sites where most of the traffic is. So yes, social media is out there. People are missing the ball right now with mobile marketing. They don't know the mobile web is different to what you see on your desktop. So I can pick up leads a little more on the mobile web. Well, people are like, how do you get that? So that has got to get into people's uh, arsenal of tools. Yeah. But 
But we, even with my software, you know, we update it every month because sites change and there's new strategies that we do. And I keep adding to it. So, it, you know, I'm not a gambler, but I will risk money in marketing to see how many leads I can get out per day. And that's my thing. And I enjoy it. So when people get my software, and everybody can get a free copy, trial copy of the software to see if, you know, how it works. Um, and we'll put that later on at uh, onlineleadfinder.com. Um, yeah, we really try and make it easy for people to listen to, I should say, to use social triggers. I'll call them keywords, but for me they're social triggers. Because the Internet's so expansive, and people are talking every day about home renovation, divorce, job relocation, new baby, etc. And those social triggers to me mean opportunity to either buy or sell a house. Mm. So we use software then to interact and engage with these people so we're top of mind and we can get those leads quickly. Okay. Okay. And so when did you start getting into uh, multifamily? Um, well, you know what? It took me quite a while to get the Moldy family, probably a year, seven and a half, because I kept hearing people say, oh, you should be multifamily. You know, it's only one more zero. And I'm like, getting into this thing, I'm like, one more zero? There is way more you got to know than a yeah. zero. It's a totally different so, animal, yeah. It's a totally different animal, and it's a scary animal, and it's, it, it, there's huge risk involved. Yeah. And um, I struggled probably for my first year with zero results multifamily. Got some leads, but I really wasn't getting it. And, and the problem came to being is that um, it wasn't a question of not having the money. It's that banks want you to have experience. Um, and what I ended up doing is I ended up surrounding myself and creating a team of successful apartment uh, investors from a multifamily attorney to an SEC attorney to put together a private place in Grand Realm, an act, a multifamily acquisition specialist, got a great CCIM realtor on the team. So that uh, all these players had a property management company for So all these people now became part of my dream team, which I could create a credibility fit and a piggyback on their uh, uh, their expertise to help me and propel me to a new level. So that's why I think networking and building your team are very, very important. And then it started clicking, like, oh, I get it, I get it. You know, or, hey, I don't get it, you do that. Right. So, yeah, folks. Uh, a lot of that's one thing that I think a lot of folks struggle with, whether it's uh, single family, multifamily, any sort of investing, is they try to do it alone, or mm-hmm. you know, they or or they listen to somebody that sold them something, which not all is bad. I mean, I'm not going to knock no, people too not. much, but um, they don't have a uh, resources to go to. They haven't built a team and surrounded themselves with others, and you know, we we speak the same language in that regard about being part of a team and surrounding yourself with people that are doing what you want to do that, um, you know, can help you take it to the next level. So, or get started, I guess. Um, you know, you can't do this as an isol- you know, isolation uh, without anybody else. You need a team and cooperation is the key to success in life. Yeah. Uh, if you're a good partner, you know, do your diligence on a good partner. That's yeah. All. Yeah. So talk a little bit about, um, obviously you use a lot of technology and, things like that. You're well known in the industry for being kind of an innovator and using technology to make your life easier. So what are you doing with all your free time? Um, well, <laughs> my free time is I like to travel and I like to spoil my kids right? So um, travel is great. Uh, I have a lot of activities that I play, you know, um, from martial arts to flying airplanes to hang gliding to diving. You know, I get a lot of free time to do that. Wow. Um, we are wanting to get more involved in our life and to giving back into the community. So, um, you know, we're looking at opening up a nonprofit to give back real estate to the community and, uh, and do something in that regard. We're setting up that right now. I don't want to go a lot into it, but yeah. it comes to the point in your life where you have to give back. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at some um, avenues that we feel we can do that to, to get the real estate. Yeah. And I think there, there there's a point in your life too at least I know with myself personally and with other people that I see where you start to think a lot more about what I'll say lifestyle design. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's like you said, uh, there's a lot of folks that I know that make a lot of money in this business. Um, and, uh, we've done very well too, but sometimes you, you look up and you say, 
I feel like I'm working a lot harder than I want to. How do I, uh, in some instances, it may be, I'm okay if I make less money, if I get my life back because, you know, I live well below my means anyway. In some instances, you have to find ways to stabilize or grow your business, you know, using other people or partnering with people or having systems or things like that that can, that can give you some of your life back. So what, in those instances, what can you share about folks that well, are interested you know, in kind probably, of making their life easier? Probably yeah. drivel. People hear it all the time, but you know, you got to have some goals. Of, you know, money is money, and it's only symbolic of what we're going to do with it. But you got to have some goals, um, and and you got to be, be passionate about your goals. To, to really write down every day what my to do with today is going to get me to that that goal. So. I'm still in the habit of every evening before I go to bed, what's my to-do list for tomorrow? Um, you know, what can I automate? What can I outsource in my business? But uh, that's very important. Um, so technology has just been an enabler for me to, um, like I say, automate the things that I don't have to do or pay somebody else to do. And again, hire a virtual assistant to do the mundane work in this business that so these people work for $3 an hour, which is great for them. But for me, I'm, I'm worth more than $3 an hour, so let them take over that component. Yeah. So I've just realized, I, I, you know, think of it running a corporate business. We're going to outsource, and we're going to automate, and we're going to keep more profits in-house, and we're going to expand by doing that. Um, but, you know, I, I want people to have a fire in their belly about this business, and where that comes to me is, making offers. The more leads they get, the more offers they can make, the more checks they're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, uh, and I'm not actually sure this isn't a softball question cause I don't know what your answer is, but, uh, with virtual assistants, I'm a big believer in virtual assistants. I have, uh, hired quite a few over the years. What, what do you, what, what's your source? Where do you find folks at? Well, um, you know what? I, I started, there's several sites online that go to find virtual assistants. And people are people, you know, they're going to post your job up there on a project basis, what you want to do, and they'll bid on that. So after about two years of doing this, um, I'm like, you know what, I really need somebody I want to get to full time that can take on the whole gamut. And it took, took me a little while to find that person. Um, but now, he came to me about a year later, he said, Duncan, you know, I'm doing all this stuff. And you have students who you also teach this stuff. But I said, yeah. He said, well, would you help me start my business? I said, how so? He said, well, you can recommend your students to me and I'll, I'll go out and I'll hire other virtual assistants in the Philippines and I'll train them on your marketing methodology. Yeah. And he says, I'll make 50 cents a person, everybody that you train. I said, well, here's the deal. Okay, you can charge 350 but if they're one of, if you, you uh, come through as one, of, if they come through as one of my students, you can only charge $3.00 and you can only make 10 cents a person that you train. Uh, otherwise, and that'll help you promote your own crowd and your own crowd. So if you go to Vert, uh, uh, I'll have to give you the link, yeah. uh, but he set up his own website now. And if you tell him, hey, Duncan sent you, you'll get him for $3 an hour. He'll set up an interview with you via Skype, interview the people. Uh, they know my marketing <laughs> methodology. And uh, away you go, and you pay him via PayPal. And I would suggest anybody just start out with one, two hours a day, three times a week, six hours. Yeah. They get a lot accomplished. Yeah. You know, they're, technology, they're college educated and they're technology proficient. Yeah. Yeah. I have two full-time virtual assistants, but I've had as many as, as four at any one time. And uh, also a big believer in the Philippines. Um, definitely have some hardworking folks there. And uh, not that people aren't hardworking in other parts of the country, but other parts of the world. But uh, um but yeah, it's uh, I'm a big believer in um, finding some folks there that can do, you know, some of the more mundane things or just some of the little things that are hard to systematize that exactly. somebody just needs to get done. So, um, well, great, exactly. great. So uh, you're doing a lot of speaking these days. You're going all kind of all over the country. Is there are there any specific parts of the country you're focused on more than others? Well, um, I, I do speak. I try to get out at least once a month. However, this couple months is I'm really super booked. Um, but people want to know about technology systems and getting their life back and getting more leads. Um, you know, I just had a great, great couple of weeks up in uh, Ohio, uh, cold. Um, I like speaking in California and I like speaking 
the southeast because that's where I do a lot of deals. So we can yeah. pick up on stuff on there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, if people get a chance to hear me speak, I give a great content-rich uh, presentation that I fully believe, even if they don't buy my course, they'll have two to three strategies they can implement by that that day on that weekend, and they'll have leads coming in on Monday morning. That's how powerful the talk I, I give is. Wow. Sometimes I wonder, are people doing this stuff? You know, um, but uh, I give them everything they need to do, whether they do it or not. It's up to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I really appreciate you joining us today. Sure. And like I said, I, I uh, encourage people to try out a free trial of my uh, online lead finder software, the online lead finder .com. Um The virtual assistant uh, site is uh, virtual, the number four, REI.com. Mm -hmm. And um, also, if, if I, I might want to talk about real quick, is yeah. like, people get a virtual closing coordinator. From the time you get a contract to the time closing, hand it over to them to babysit the deal because I don't babysit well. And a lot of things can go wrong during the closing process. These people are trained to make sure that they'll close it, and they only get paid if you get paid. Wow. So are those are those folks that are based outside of the U.S. as well? or No, they're based here. Okay. OnlineClosingTeam.com is a virtual a virtual closing coordinator company. They're also known as Transact Action Management Consultants. Yep. Uh, cost about $300, $400 per deal they close when you get paid. Um, but I tell you what. You know how difficult, you know, sometimes closing can be in that process yeah. is. I'm like, I got better things to do than be on the phone all right. time. My strength is make an offer. So I think get a VA, automate with software your lead generation and your marketing, and um, get a virtual closing coordinator and just make offers. I'm literally working in my real estate business uh, two hours a day. Yeah. That's fascinating. We, uh, I, I'm not familiar with uh, with a closing coordinator, virtual one. I mean, I've heard of, you know, usually title companies have their own closing coordinator of some sort that's helping facilitate it. But I mean, I, I literally, I recently moved to another title company that we got, you know, unusually good pricing at. We worked with for a long time and was willing to pay, you know, double or more what I was paying before just because I realized how much internally my staff was chasing this other title company and yeah. they're having some staffing issues too. But we got, I mean, that's one, that's one other problem I'd say that a lot of folks need to recognize as real estate investors is your opportunity cost, the opportunity cost of your time. Like what are you doing that you could have somebody else do and people get hung up on the money part of it? Well, I don't want to pay for that. And it's like, okay, well, what else could you do with your time? What's your, what's your exactly. dollar per hour rate? Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, fascinating. I mean, these people are better trained than me and much more available. So, yeah, virtual closing coordinator, I tell you, it's going to make your life so much easier. Yeah, we'll, we'll put those links all below the video so if folks can check it out. I'm, I'm going to check that one out myself. So, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, tell, tell me you came from Duncan and talk to Michelle Spaulding. You'll get the Duncan discount, too. The Duncan discount. All right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, hey, thanks for joining us today on the show. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Anytime. I appreciate all your information. And for those watching, we'll add links below the video. If you want to get a hold of Duncan, learn more about his programs or any of the other things we just talked about, go ahead and uh, check out those links below. So thanks, Duncan. We'll see you soon. Great. Are you a member of Flipner.com, the most robust real estate investing platform in existence, where you can find off-market wholesale deals and great vendors literally in your market? You can get access to advice from experts and learn about local clubs and events right in your backyard. If not, please visit flipner.com and register for a free account. You can register in less than a minute. It's pretty much the coolest site that's ever existed in the real estate investing industry. So get on over to flipner.com.